Welcome to the Scaling Japan Podcast, a podcast about how to grow your business from one hundred thousand dollars and beyond. And beyond in the land of the rising sun. Welcome to the Scaling Japan Podcast. I'm your host Tyson Batino, and today we have a special solo episode with just me. So I've been coaching around 15 companies for the last three to four months, and I've also been running my Japanese language school, Japan Switch, and also working for my other company, One Coin English. And these are my takeaways for 2021, and I hope these information will help you out when you make your business plans for 2022. The first thing that really stood out for me in 2021 is the big changes that are happening in digital marketing. So one thing that had a really big impact on us is the Apple iOS updates, which has greatly affected, I'll say, Google Display ads and also Facebook and Instagram ads, and it has changed the way I've had to think about marketing at the end of 2021. And moving forward in 2022, with the iOS updates, basically it was an update to the privacy rules, and that has greatly impacted the deep level of tracking and targeting that digital marketers were able to do. So, for example, in the past through Facebook. I could send ads specifically to someone who's probably between 30.、Uh, let's say I have my target audience is 30 to 40, and they would like to lose weight and they're married. Previously, I could send an ad specifically to this person. However, with the iOS updates, because of the new privacy rules, it's I would say the accuracy of Facebook targeting. Has greatly decreased, and considering that Apple users, I think, don't quote me on this, but it's probably around fifty percent of people are using Apple, at least in Western countries. You know, that's fifty percent of your audience, or potentially even more, that you're no longer able to target as effectively. And this changes actually; it has already greatly impacted e-commerce sites, and it's going to make Facebook marketing. Less accessible to the general business owner, and because of these changes in the past, I could usually just get someone to send me an inquiry form for a really affordable price through Facebook ads. But I'm gonna have to change my approach in rather than focusing on the sale, maybe focusing on getting someone's email address or getting them to sign up to my webinar as a more effective or more cost-effective method. Also, there's going to be some changes in SEO as well, and this is not for sure. But there's the possibility where SEO rankings will go to companies or blogs that specialize in a specific area. So, for example, you do have some sites on the internet which are called aggregator sites, where they pretty much cover every topic. So I think in Japan, I think Gaijin Pot is one. Tokyo Cheapo is another. Matcha, you know, they cover travel and they cover all these other areas like finances, housing. Doing something like that moving forward is going to be much harder, as Google will probably give ranking priorities to companies who do a blog who specialize in that area. So the attention will go towards expertise. As opposed to aggregator sites, luckily for the big players, they will probably not be impacted so much because their domain has a lot of authority. It's been in existence; a lot of people trust them, so they probably won't see a big impact. But for anyone who's just entering the realm now, it's going to be much harder to create a media or aggregator website. And the last thing regarding marketing, I think because marketing is going to get tougher and tougher for digital marketing, and that companies, in a way, they did have it a bit too easy. The one trend that I'm seeing other companies pursue is retention 
as the new acquisition. So acquisition means getting new customers, but retention is the new buzzword now where rather than focusing on getting new customers, you really put your attention onto keeping current customers. So for those of you who are a subscribing to something or are using some services, computer software, you're probably going to see much bigger effort moving forward to keep you as a customer and add more benefits. So from my end, if you can do it for your business, creating a community is one very strong way to develop retention for your business. Also, you really need to know who your power users are and get their assistance in helping you expand the business. And on the last note, as mentioned, I am coaching around 15 businesses to scale their company from, I'll say, 100,000 US, maybe even a half a million, and some companies a million or more, into 10 million more. And I've been really focusing on helping them really understand how much money is going into their marketing and what is the return on investment. Uh, One thing I've noticed is that people don't tend to include the marketer's HR costs into their overall marketing costs. And I think that gives an inaccurate picture of what your actual total marketing costs are. So yeah, the big thing is really start tracking your data, get your Google Analytics set up, and you really need to understand what platforms are performing well for you and not well. And based on that, you can make really smart decisions. And the areas I'm seeing the biggest impact for my clients is helping them optimize their websites. Because if you're getting 1,000 or let's say 5,000 people a month, even getting 2% more inquiries can lead to potentially 100 more inquiries a month if I did my math correct. So even just a 2% change could potentially lead to 100 plus customers with 5,000 visitors a month. And the other area I've been helping people is with their sales pamphlets, because if you are getting yourself in front of other people, if you could increase that conversion rate by 25%, so if you talk with 10 people a month, even 20%, you could get two more customers a month just by upgrading your sales pamphlet and process. And that's the areas rather than just trying to get new customers, focusing on optimizing the website and the sales pamphlet will help you increase your conversion rate for new customers. Like what you're listening to and ready to scale your company? Let Tyson coach you and your team to make the jump. You can find more information about our coaching and advisory services at www.scalingyourcompany.com. Now, back to our podcast. The other big thing I learned was the importance of having the right business model. If you've heard my story before with OneCoin English, we created English, I'll say a low cost English school in Tokyo. And we've grown to about 8,000 students in about seven years. And a big part of that was just having a really solid business model. And also for my coaching, even though I started in October or like near the end of September, I was able to get 15 clients while working with my other two businesses because I chose a solid business model that would sell for itself. But the big insights regarding business model is something called the Pyramid of Business Priorities, which was created by the founder of LinkedIn in his book called Blitzscaling. And what he mentioned is that distribution is everything. Distribution. And what I mean by distribution is getting your product in front of people. So you could focus on operations. You could focus on what your competitors are doing. You could focus on your pricing models. But the area to really focus on is distribution. And to give you a prime example of this, there's the famous YouTubers Dogen for Japanese pronunciation. Uh, There's Abroad in Japan, which focuses on anything and everything Japan. And at least with the Abroad in Japan, he has multiple millions of subscribers. And what he has is an example of distribution. So whatever business model or I would say product he makes after that, 
because he has distribution, the likelihood of success is really high because he knows how to get it in front of people. And if he chooses something that matches his target audience, bam, that's a lot more revenue for him. So how the business pyramid works, it starts off the most best thing to have is distribution. The second best is the product itself. If you have a solid product itself, it could distribute itself because it's so good. Third is pricing model. Third is fourth is operations. And last is focusing on the competition. So if Chris, uh, I think it's Chris abroad, but abroad in Japan, if he found a really solid business partner uh, who could run the operations and he found a really solid and create the business and another solid partner who is really good at non-YouTube digital marketing, pretty much whatever product or service he creates is going to rock out. And for those of you who don't have distribution, and if you have friends who are struggling with their business, pretty much always the reason is either the product or service or distribution. So you could have the great product or service, but if no one knows, you don't get sales. So I think distribution is really, really everything. So if you plan to create a company in the future, I would highly recommend partnering with someone like I think Kemushichan, Dogen, Matt versus Japan, Abroad in Japan, any YouTubers with that audience, and you're going to rock it out. Also, if you're a YouTuber uh, with a big audience, I would highly recommend coaching with me and I can help guide you on creating the right new business to leverage your distribution. The third big area that I wanted to focus on on my recap of 2021 is recruitment. And so having a lot of friends who run businesses and doing business coaching myself, I've noticed the big challenge to get quality talent. And the reason why talent is so important is you could hire someone for cheap or someone uh, entry level and train them to do a really good job. But if you could find someone who's already done the job and you can just hire them give them the goal and say, give them the budget and let them run off with it. You know, they're going to scale so much faster than someone entry level who you are going to have to train and pick up. Obviously, the, the benefits of having someone entry level and training them yourself is the loyalty they have towards you as a leader and also the brand. It's having something like that really makes entrepreneurship so much fun. But if you're looking to scale fast, like finding that person who can just run from day one will really take your company to the next step. But in 2021, one thing I've noticed that companies have not done very well is recruitment branding. And what I mean by that is when for marketing or selling products, you could focus on or a lot of companies focus on their brand. What is the feel? What is the color? What is the target audience? What do you want the person to feel when they experience your brand? And there's companies spend millions and billions of dollars poured into hiring branding consultants to develop their corporate brand to sell more products and services. But I've never seen companies apply that same amount of attention to hiring great people. And that is one reason that many companies struggle with that. So if you're a company like Nike, Google, where you just have that cool factor to it, you know, you don't really need, or they've actually, it may not seem like it, but they've actually spent a lot of time on their recruitment. However, if you're a company that does not offer premium salaries, meaning paying more, much higher than the 20, 30% and much higher than the market average, Recruitment branding, you know, that same attention to sales and marketing branding, applying that to recruitment could help you a lot. And when I check out company websites, you know, they never answer the question like, why should you really work for our company? Like they talk a lot about themselves, but they don't really talk about how they'll benefit you if you join their company. And that is a really big weak point for a lot of companies out there. Welcome to the end of the podcast. We appreciate you listening to the end of this Scaling Japan episode. And if you would like more great episodes on scaling your business in Japan, please check out www.scalingyourcompany.com forward slash 
Podcast.